Paradise, champion of the public interest, or treacherous betrayer of national secrets. The argument over U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden has stepped up a notch. As his father, seen here wearing red, went to visit him in Russia yesterday, a former top British official was telling the Times newspaper just how much damage he thought the intelligence leaks had done. Sir David Oman said, the assumption the experts are working on is that all that information, or almost all of it, will now be in the hands of Moscow and Beijing. It's the most catastrophic loss to British intelligence ever. The Guardian newspaper, which has published selected revelations from Mr. Snowden, says there's more to come. Today its actions were defended by a senior minister. There is a distinction between whistleblowing to draw the public's attention to things happening in the intelligence world that shouldn't have been happening, uh, absolutely right, and actually putting into the hands of other people a lot of very, very detailed uh, intelligence information which they shouldn't have had. The Guardian has revealed the extent of massive surveillance on private messages being conducted by the government's communications headquarters. It's prompted a debate over whether there's appropriate oversight of the intelligence agencies. Some insist all secrets must stay secret. You can always justify anything if you're a newspaper on the grounds that this is open journalism. But this is about much more than journalism. It's genuinely about how we protect the national interest. And that's not just about protecting the establishment. It's about keeping people safe. It's about avoiding another 7th of July 2005. But while Edward Snowden has taken 58,000 secret British intelligence files with him to Russia, the Guardian newspaper has only published a tiny fraction of that amount. It insists this was, and still is, firmly in the public interest. Frank Gardner, BBC News.